Technology keeps moving. In the mid-90s most people had no idea what the internet actually was. You had to hook up wires to a massive computer just to get a slow connection. Now, it's all wireless, sitting in the palm of your hand. Things change so fast we forget how they even started or what they replaced. And sometimes, we think we're the first to invent something when we're not. Ancient civilizations built things that still mess with modern scientists. Half the time, we don't even know how and why they did it. And what you're about to see today is all real. Here are the 15 most mysterious ancient technologies that really exist right on Earth. Number 15. Umbrellas and Parasols. Before umbrellas became something you grab on a rainy day, they served a completely different purpose. They were used for shade. Ancient Egypt and China both had their own versions of parasols over 4,000 years ago. Back then, keeping dry wasn't the priority. Staying out of the sun was Egyptians used them as status symbols, carried over by royals and nobility to block UV rays. Around the same time, China had similar inventions, though their umbrellas eventually evolved to handle rain, not UV. The design was simple but clever, folding frames with fabric stretched tight, often decorated or crafted from paper and bamboo. There's still debate over who came up with the idea first, but it's likely both civilizations figured it out independently. What's sure is that the earliest waterproof umbrellas came from China around 3,100 years ago. That's when function started to meet practicality, and today's umbrellas, still built on the same basic concept. Even with all our tech, this ancient invention hasn't changed much. And that says something. Number 14. Dubai Sips Ancient Recycling Plant. Recycling sounds like a modern concept, but it's been around way longer than most people think. In 2020, archaeologists working in the southern Persian Gulf uncovered a site in Dubai that turned out to be the oldest known recycling facility in the world, dated at over 3,000 years old. It wasn't built with any environmental agenda, it was about usefulness. Craftsmen came here not to toss broken tools or ceramics, but to repurpose them. Pieces of worn-out pottery and metal scraps were melted down or reworked into tools, jewelry and religious objects. And it wasn't a small-scale thing. They ran this like a full operation, with traces of smelting, shaping and even decorative work. What still puzzles researchers is why they chose this spot. It's far from any major settlement and surrounded by nothing but desert. Yet they set up shop here and kept it going. Waste wasn't wasted. It had value. And clearly they knew how to use every last piece. Number 13. Hydraulis of Dion. The hydraulis wasn't just an instrument. It was an invention. And we mean it really was. The earliest one was built in Alexandria by Tisibius. But the one that gets the spotlight is the Hydraulis of Dion. It was found near Mount Olympus in 1992, and it's over 2,100 years old. This water-powered organ worked by using compressed air balanced through water pressure. Each pipe played a specific note, and the player controlled the melody by hand. The Dion Hydraulis was different. It had light-touch keys and could be played more like a piano. 19 pipes follow the traditional ancient Greek music scale, and five others extend it, though experts, as always, still aren't sure how. The bottom part, the system that controlled airflow, is gone, but the rest is intact. What's crazy is how advanced it feels. This wasn't some novelty. This was high-level design, made to perform in temples, courts, and festivals. The sound it must have produced is long gone. But even silent, the hydraulis still makes noise in the world of ancient tech. Number 12. Lasithi Plateau Windmills In the Lasithi Plateau of Crete, thousands of white-sailed windmills once spun to life, keeping farms alive through brutal seasons. This wasn't some tourist setup. These were tools for survival. Around 10,000 windmills once stood here, helping locals manage the land. The soil was rich, but the water table made it tough to farm, 
flooding ruined crops, so they built windmills to drain water and spread it evenly across fields. These weren't modern steel giants, they were stone, canvas and ingenuity. About 5,000 still stand. Most are silent now, worn down by time, but a few still do the job. They're proof that the people here figured out a way to work with nature, not against it. There was no electricity or high-tech Volvo machines, just wind, water and stubborn will. These mills didn't just pump water, they helped entire generations stay fed. Well, you can call it engineering, or tradition, but either way, it worked just perfectly. Number 11. The Digesting Duck, France. Long before modern robots like Ameca or Sophia were built to assist, amuse, or impress us, there was this, the digesting duck. In 1739, a French inventor named Jacques de Valcanson unveiled a mechanical duck that to the shock of the public seemed to eat, digest, and excrete grain just like a real bird. People fed it kernels, watched it waddle, and believed it was alive. But it was all a mechanical illusion. The grain went into one compartment, and preloaded waste came out of another. Still, for its time, it was groundbreaking. Valkenson wasn't just showing off gears, he was playing with lifelike automation. The duck reportedly flapped its wings, quacked, and even mimicked drinking water. While much of the original design has been lost, records confirm that it was far more than a toy, it was a complex display of technical skill and imagination. Sadly, the original duck was destroyed in a fire in 1879, but its legacy didn't burn with it. It marked one of the earliest moments humans tried to recreate life using machines. Number 10. Fort Valbon and Castellum de Visum. Fort Valbon in France is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and has officially been recognized as a historic monument by the French government since 1875. But the story behind this place started way before that. The fort was built by the Romans and still holds remains of structures they left behind. One of the most impressive is the Castellum de Visum. Calling it a water tank doesn't quite describe what it was. Water from an aqueduct flowed into it, and from there it spread across the city reaching baths, fountains and public buildings through a massive network of lead pipes. Every hole at the base once held a pipe, each one running for miles. It wasn't just plumbing, it was full-blown infrastructure. You don't need much imagination to see how far ahead of their time the Romans really were. This setup worked like clockwork, and the precision behind it still stuns modern engineers. The Castellum wasn't just practical, it was brilliant. Number 9. Shaduff. The Shaduff is nothing more than a long wooden pole with a bucket at one end and a weight at the other, but it's lasted over 5,000 years for a reason. First built by the Mesopotamians, it became a go-to irrigation tool across Egypt, Crete, China, and more. It lifts water from one source and pours it where it's needed, fields, canals, or storage pits. It's simple, direct, and built to solve one problem, moving water. The design barely changed over time because it didn't need to. Even today, you'll still find it being used in parts of India, Pakistan, and rural Africa. In fact, there are farmers alive right now using the same method that their ancestors used thousands of years ago. It's not fancy. It doesn't need gears, motors, or metal. It's wood, rope, balance, and purpose. When a tool just works, there's no need to redesign it. That's the Shaduff, a perfect example of function over everything. So never change what you don't need to. Keep it as it is. Number 8. Belize Sisters 4, 000 year old fish trap canals. Well, who doesn't love fishing? especially when the fish basically trap themselves. Around 4,000 years ago, long before the Maya ever showed up, a group of pre-Maya hunter-gatherers in Belize built a network of canals and ponds across nearly 16 square miles. This wasn't some tiny side project. We're talking 167 trenches and 60 holding ponds, all carved by hand. The setup worked like a seasonal trap, during floods, fish swam in freely but when the waters dried up, they were stuck. All locals had to do was show up with spears. No maize, no farming, just fresh fish on repeat. 
And it wasn't a one-off. Researchers think this system fed up to 15,000 people per year. What sparked it? A brutal drought between 2200 and 1900 BCE. Instead of starving or migrating, they adapted. The best part? Locals say these ponds still trap fish during the dry season. Four millennia later. That's not just smart engineering. That's generational thinking at its finest. Number 7. Circus Maximus. The Circus Maximus wasn't just a sports arena, it was Rome's largest stage for chaos, celebration, and sometimes tragedy. Built over 2,600 years ago, this massive chariot racing stadium could pack in over 150,000 people. It was the model for stadiums across the empire, but none matched its scale or atmosphere. Races were fast, brutal, and often deadly, but the crowd loved every second. One of the worst disasters in sports history happened here around 140 AD, when an upper section collapsed during an event, killing more than a thousand people. Despite that, the arena was rebuilt and kept going for centuries, hosting races, beast hunts, and festivals, until the 6th century. The structure has changed a lot over time, but its bones are still there beneath modern Rome. Today it's a public park, sometimes used for concerts, but the ghosts of that ancient roar haven't faded. It wasn't about glory or gold. It was about spectacle, and no one did it bigger than Rome. What do you think about it? Well let us know. Now let's talk about Number 6. Patara Pipes for a long time, historians gave the Romans credit for the underground pipes spread across ancient sites in Turkey. The Patara pipes forced everyone to rethink that. These pipes weren't built by the Romans. The Romans built around them, the style doesn't match their architecture, and even more telling, there's no record of them ever mentioning it. And the Romans, well, they loved writing about themselves. Imagine them like today's Holy and the Whole Stars. They detailed everything from roads to fountains, but said nothing about these pipes. So that silence matters. A Roman pillar found in Patara in 1993 lays out every single thing they did in the city. It includes roads, baths, and structures, but not a word about the pipes. That means they were already there. Whoever built them is still unknown. They were laid deep and ran through Roman settlements like veins, but came from someone else entirely. They work too well to be a fluke. The mystery isn't just how they were built. It's who got there first and left without a trace. Number Sink Beville Paper Machines Raman Lowell, a 13th this century philosopher, created something that still confuses experts rotating paper machines called voles. He claimed they could reveal universal truths, but whether that's true or not is still debated. The design is delicate concentric paper circles filled with symbols and words, mounted to spin over one another. The idea was to align certain values or categories to reach a calculated answer. It's sometimes compared to an astrolabe, but the volos were far more fragile, made from parchment rather than metal. Lowell genuinely believed this tool could help unite different cultures and faiths through logic. His writings suggest he hoped the machines would encourage shared understanding by generating balanced arguments and perspectives. Whether they worked or not is beside the point. They represented a massive leap in how people thought about information and logic. And centuries before computers, this was one man trying to build a mechanical brain out of paper. Strange, idealistic, and kind of brilliant. Number Veer Oldest Drag Tracks these days we've got Teslas, turbocharged trucks, and EVs that park themselves. But 22,000 years ago? People were already pulling off their own kind of transport tech. In New Mexico's White Sands, archaeologists found something that changed the story, drag marks next to ancient human footprints, not random scratches, clean lines, some running nearly 50 meters. These weren't made by animals, humans were hauling stuff. The setup? A travel, two poles tied together, dragging across the ground. Indigenous communities used it for centuries. Turns out, so did their ancestors, thousands of years earlier than anyone expected. Adults walked, kids walked with them. 
The drag marks followed beside, no wheels, no carts, just raw invention. Researchers even built their own travel and tested it on mud to match the tracks. It worked. This wasn't just movement, it was migration with strategy. Before roads, wagons or riding, people were engineering their way forward, using nothing but wood, rope, and grit. This wasn't survival, it was planning. Number Dre. Gutenberg sits printing press. Johannes Gutenberg's invention didn't just launch printing, it rewired how knowledge spread across the world. But the press itself wasn't just one machine. It was a combination of inventions, a moldable metal alloy, a new kind of oil-based ink, and a mechanical press inspired more by winemaking than anything from the publishing world. Before Gutenberg, printing meant carving entire pages into wood blocks. Slow, fragile, and expensive. His version, faster, cleaner, and reusable. He didn't just cut time, he created the concept of mass communication. In its prime, Gutenberg's press could churn out thousands of pages a day. The world didn't just get books, it got newspapers, ideas, and revolutions. What made it so groundbreaking was how perfectly it all worked together. No part was flashy, but as a whole, it changed everything. And it didn't just appear out of nowhere, Gutenberg built it piece by piece, problem by problem. One man figured out how to make words permanent, and in doing so, he gave the world a new kind of voice. Number 2. Thousand Eye Bridge. When Poyang Lake in China dried up during a 2014 drought, a ghost from the Ming Dynasty came back into view. Stretching nearly 1.8 miles, the granite bridge revealed itself from the lake bed like something out of another world. It had been forgotten entirely, buried beneath water for centuries. Local historians call it the Thousand Eye Bridge, thanks to the 1,100 stone holes cut into its path, spaced with intention and balance. It's believed to have been built in 1631 under the Chongzhen Emperor's orders, but no definitive records confirm it. With that much stone laid out across an unstable lake bed, it's hard to imagine how builders pulled it off without sinking. Even stranger, the lake has a history of vanishing ships and strange disappearances, earning comparisons to the Bermuda Triangle. Some believe the bridge became part of the myth, swallowed by legend as much as by water. Today it remains one of China's longest submerged bridges, resurfacing just long enough to raise more questions than answers. Number 1. Barbigal Water Mills the Barbigal mills in France are one of those ancient engineering feats that barely anyone talks about, but they should, built by the Romans near Arles, this hillside complex of 16 water wheels, operated like a factory long before factories existed. The layout was smart, two rows of overshot wheels running down a slope, using gravity and water flow to power massive grain grinders. It wasn't just clever, it was efficient. At full operation the Barbigal mills could produce around 4.5 tons of flour every single day. That's enough to feed thousands. Most Roman mills were basic, but this one was on another level. It's often called the most powerful mechanical setup of its time and possibly the world's first industrial plant. The remains of the site still sit quietly on that hillside, overlooked and forgotten by most travelers. But what it represents is massive. Before steam, before engines, people were already figuring out how to make nature do the heavy lifting. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, share it with your folks, and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you soon in the next one.